You know, but I've come to the point where I really believe that it's almost insulting to God to wish you had what somebody else has because if we really believe that he created us with his own hand, I love the Amplified carefully and you know, it's like he really took his time and not like just threw a bunch of stuff together and here we are. And even the things that we think are wrong with us, really God has a purpose. I had to learn that, you know, unique is actually good, yeah. that God created us that way. He, he's kind of fixed us to where not one of us has everything yeah. Yeah. because That's we would just truth. be so full of ourselves if we did. <laughs> you know, like I look at you girls that can sing and I used to wish I could preach and sing. And, you know, but I've come to the point where I really believe that it's almost insulting to God yeah. to wish you had wow. what somebody else has because if we really believe that he created us with his own hand. I love the Amplified carefully. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like he really took his time and not like just threw a bunch of stuff together and here we are. And even the things that we think are wrong with us, really God has a purpose in them. And like for a long time, I just really hated my voice because my voice is so deep and it's unusual for a woman, and I would always get, like I could pick up the phone and call the desk in a hotel, yes sir, yes sir. I even called a spa one day to make an appointment to get a facial, and they asked me if I had any facial hair. And I thought, I wasn't, I wasn't tracking with her, and so I'm thinking. I know exactly, I was gonna say that well. I'm thinking, well, you know, I have this right here. <laughs> We've all got a little peach fuzz. And I said, exactly. And she said, no, 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 I mean, do you have a beard or a mustache? And I said, oh. <laughs> now, you know, there would have been a day when that would have just done me in, yeah. but because now I know who I am in Christ, I, I got such a big kick out of that, and I've been able to tell so many funny <laughs> stories about it. And so we do need to embrace our uniqueness. Yeah. I'm really tired of the phoniness. and. Same. I really want people to know that you, know, you can't be authentic unless you embrace your uniqueness. Yeah. Because otherwise you always feel like you have to try to be what you think everybody else expects you to be. Yes. Exactly. And you know, like the thing with my voice, when I, after God called me to preach, now my voice goes all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of men listen to me as well as women and not to be insulting to you ladies who have nice little sweet voices, but I think that men would have a harder time listening to me yes. if I was just me, it's me. And so God knows what he's doing, yes. bottom line. God knows what he's doing. Anybody else ever had any uh, unique characteristics that they had a <laughs> challenging time with? The funny thing with? is is that I knew I should have brought a pen when you were gonna be the one that was out here. Cause that, that statement, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna write that down where you said it's it's basically an insult to God to wish that you had, I've actually never really even fully viewed it that way. And I think just that one statement, it's like, hey, thanks for joining us today, bye. <laughs> because that, if people can get a hold of that, that it's an insult to God because how he made you and equipped you and designed you was his idea. And so to think that you're less than um, and sometimes I have to tell myself that on the daily, sometimes it's weekly, sometimes it's, but just to remind myself of, okay, it's okay that you are in this way because it's exactly how he equipped you to be. And I find that where I struggle, I have to be careful. I've got three daughters. And so when I have negative, what I call negative self-talk, like, oh, Lord, I just wish my legs were longer, or I wish my whatever, or I wish that this was different, you know, not only is it affecting us because not only are we thinking it, but we're saying it, and then we're hearing it being right. said. So there's this yeah. cyclical thing that's happening, but then my kids are hearing me say it. So then my girls are aware of everything I say and how I feel like I'm falling short. And then you realize, living in such a way where you feel less than doesn't just affect you. It actually is affecting everybody around you. And that's why I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna write that down and take that home to the kids. You know, I think, I think too is when I, when I start thinking of even, so I had sons, and when you have a child, 
You don't want that child insecure about anything. And this is the way God made you, yes. you know, just because you're little or just because you're this or you're that. So you, um, you're, so a child is what relates to me, just like you, Natalie, yes. pouring into your child that you never want them to be insecure. That's what God does to us. Yes. He pours in through his word who we are in Christ so that we're never insecure. We're never looking at them wanting to be like them because we need them. And that's why God makes us, I believe, not have everything because we need each other we so need much, each other. you know. Yeah. I went through so many episodes of trying to be like somebody else because yes. I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was a normal woman. Hmm. You know, I had a call on my life, so I had different interests mm -hmm. than what some women would. And I didn't realize it was the devil, but you know, I would hear this message, you need to just calm down and forget all this preaching and teaching mm. stuff and just be a, a normal, regular woman. And so I actually, there was a year in my life, I had taught home Bible studies for five years in the beginning of my ministry, and then God said, he wanted me to stop doing those. Behold, I do a new thing. Well, I thought I was just going to take on the world right away. And I just kind of got set up on a shelf and didn't do anything for a year. But I look back now and I realize during that year, that was when God set me free to be me because I tried, like, I had a neighbor who was very artsy and crafty and she made her family's clothes. And Did she and cook? She, oh, she cooked oh, and sweet. she had a garden and she canned and, you know, so <laughs> she... She those. talked me into taking sewing lessons. Back then there was something called stretch and sew. And uh, uh, I got a sewing machine and I tried to make Dave a pair of shorts. And when I got finished, the pockets were longer than the legs. <laughs> and I mean, it was just, I hated it. I hated the sewing machine. I hated doing it, but I felt like I needed to be yeah. a normal woman. And so she had a garden with tomatoes. So. I say we planted tomatoes. Dave said he planted tomatoes. <laughs> this is an absolute true story. We were going to pick them the next day and can them. They were beautiful. And overnight, a swarm of black bugs came in and ate big holes in my tomatoes. <laughs> well, I assumed they ate them in hers. So, so <laughs> they, I, they wanted your big one. <laughs> I called her the next morning and I said, oh, our tomatoes are ruined. Some kind of bugs ate holes in our tomatoes. And she ran out and she said, mine look fine. Look, your tomatoes are And I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> now, I prayed over these tomatoes. And he said, you know what? I have no responsibility to protect your tomatoes because I didn't call you to grow tomatoes. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wow. That sets me free because my mother <laughs> is an avid gardener and I am not. But I, I just want to say, Joyce, that because you did what God told you to do and not be the normal woman that you thought you had to be. You were the inspiration to me, a little girl in Australia that used to watch you and um, yes. wasn't the same as every other girl that knew there was a call in my life, but I didn't get to see women in ministry in Australia on the mass. So for me, I'm thankful that you beheld your uniqueness and you did what God called you to do and I think that's what happens when you yes. think you need to be something else. There's somebody out there that needs your uniqueness to give them permission to be unique. And because for me, growing up, I was a little ethnic, you know, immigrant's daughter who grew up in a just average home but didn't really have much. I hated the way I looked. I literally hated the way, and I honestly, I, I thought I had the biggest nose. I had curly, frizzy hair that could not be tamed. And I I was so unique in that way because I grew up around a lot of Australian girls, a little blonde, Farrah Fawcett hairdos back then. And, you know, everyone was gorgeous and in my eyes. You know, I was the kid with the big nose, the frizzy hair. And so I was just, I thought I was ugly and I thought I couldn't do anything. And so I sat in that insecurity for years and years and years until God had to break me free of all of that. And I had a loud laugh, you know. I was, you know, I'm just not, but isn't it funny that the laugh that is my now, now that I'm free in that 
the thing that I was so fearful of is what actually sets other people free and they love that about you. And so I hate the way the enemy comes in and the way God has made us so unique. It's actually robbing other people from being permitted to be who they are to be. So be I think Because we have the truth is that's actually one of your very healthy tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there's a healthy fruit, but there, there's actually a visual in that for me that, you know, when, when you cannot walk in who it is that God has uniquely designed you to be, not only does it rob yourself, but it would have robbed the world from the fruit of a little girl totally. that was looking at you and saying, well, yes, I can. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yes, totally. I can. And that's the thing is it doesn't just for ourselves so that we feel good in ourselves, so that we feel comfortable, so that we feel like we can just finally be okay. But it's also so that a lot of other people, um, and that's the fruit of, of our decision and our yes, you know, and that's, that's a reason enough. <laughs> it is. It says they that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Mm. And I think, especially as females, we're so prone to, you know, look and see what she has, and I don't have that, and I can't do this that way. If I just had long hair, and exactly, if I just was or whatever smaller, it is, if I could yes. just this. There's and always that. something, always something. And I remember being, you know, the scrawny kid with the long arms and the, you know, hair going this way and that way, and the thumb sucker and the stutterer and the fast talker, and 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 hated my arms. As I said, I, I was the one who you know, the boy arms, hated the boy arms, you know? <laughs> and eventually they became something that people would talk about. But I remember when I was about 20 or 21, and I was listening to Whitney and Cece, and I remember the Lord telling me, you'll never be them, but you can be the best you that I've made you to be. Yeah. And that was like one of the biggest moments of freedom for me because since then I never tried to be anybody else. Yeah. I never tried to compare yeah. myself with anybody else. I'm like, then what? would be the best Nicole. What is she like? Yeah, okay, now, so Nicole is quirky. She does pick up, she may pick up a sewing machine. Nicole likes to pick up a guitar. Nicole likes to do flips. Nicole likes to, you know, write songs. She likes to make shirts. Yeah, yeah I know, Nicole, and like, socks. Like, yeah, socks, exactly. <laughs> you do so, so like, All these different quirky <laughs> things that would make me me, I was free to explore because I wasn't trying to fill somebody else's shoes, right. you know? And so it's, it's, it's been the freeing thing for me. So I'm just saying that that comparison thing that the devil tries to trap us all in, yes. it, it's, it's, a, it's bondage. It just mm -hmm. keeps us weighed yes. down and thinking I'll never be. And it's like, okay, well, I, I will never be. And that's okay, but I can celebrate somebody else who's doing it. I can celebrate your voice. I can celebrate yeah. your beauty. You know what I'm saying? I can celebrate your voice. I can celebrate your everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't, and it doesn't affect, it doesn't withdraw anything from me to do that. You know, it doesn't cost me anything that's yeah. going to, you know, I love be a that. deficit. It doesn't cost me. Yeah. yeah. So you know, God puts gifts in other people for us. Yes. yes. He did, like he had to show me. He's like, you know, the gift I've put in you is not for you. It's for other people. Yes. It makes me work. Yes. Gives yes. them pleasure. Yeah. And so the gift that God has put in you mm. is not something that He wants somebody else. I can't enjoy you if I'm jealous of you. That's right. I, you know, if I, I wish I could sing like that. I wish I could sing like that. I wish I looked like that. Then not only can I not enjoy you, but to be honest, we could never be friends. Yeah, you're right. And you can't even enjoy you. No. Yeah. yeah. No, you can't. Yeah. And I believe that probably the largest part of people don't like who they are. Yeah. And I think that is the number one problem that we have because if you don't like and love yourself, and I don't mean be in love with yourself, yes. but love yourself, you cannot love somebody else because you cannot give away what you don't have. Now that'll preach in the because maybe you see the flaws in others like you see in yourself. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so that's all you can see. Yeah. You know, we can look in the mirror, all of us. I tried to be like my pastor's <laughs> wife and she was, <laughs> she was sweet and blonde and, so submissive. And of course, she loved to counsel people. And she'd say, oh, tell me more. Tell, well, you talk to me two minutes, I know what's wrong with you, here's what you need to do. If you don't do it, don't bother coming back. <laughs> and I just tried so hard. I even actually, I did this. I tried to lower my voice. Yes. People would say, what is wrong with you? <laughs> And it's so wonderful to finally get through all that nonsense. Yes. And I do think people kind of have to go through it. You do. 
I think you have to try it to find yeah. out. It's just yeah. not going to work. Yeah. And you need to accept yourself. Yeah. And if there's things about you that aren't perfect, I just say, do the best you can with what you got <laughs> and stop worrying about what you don't have. Well, I think the thing is too, like when I listen to you say that, it's just a reminder to me that a lot of people are constantly chasing. So yes, you have to go through that, but then you get to the place where if you can get to the place where you can accept who God made you to be and walk in it, then I look at you in your not real later years, but in your somewhat later years, and you're still here. The longevity is there. And so I think a lot of people watching even they're thinking about these things they want to do or dreams they've had or platforms they wish they could be on or whatever it is and and they don't ever get so they're constantly chasing what this person and then it didn't work out and then they're chasing what this person and if they could only get to the place where they can accept which I'm preaching to myself <laughs> you get to the place where you accept who you are and what God's called you to be I remember a time and I think we would identify a lot in this being just on a platform in an entertainment sense, right? Even though it's ministry, yeah. it's still yeah. the pressure of a record company yes. thinking how yes. you have to look and how yeah. you have to sound and yeah. how you have to sing. And I went through so much insecurity because my voice is my voice, mm -hmm. right? It's, it, it is what it is. It's, it's power, it's loud, it's strong. They I thought try to I was white, off. I thought you were black. I don't know how to yeah, yeah. do it yeah, yeah. another way. And I would look at other people that were like, that was the sound of the moment, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Be like, well, you need to be more like this. So then you try to record something, you're like, that's not even me. And it doesn't work and it doesn't work. And then you're like, well, I'm trying to be this and try to fit into this. And they bring you a sound from pop music. Well, that's what's working. And I remember just going through those first probably six to seven years of my music career of people telling me all the things I needed to be because what I was wasn't going to work. Yeah, yeah. It was too gospel to be a white girl. It was too loud. It was too strong. It was too... And you know what? Here I am 22 or 23 years later um, because I made a decision mm -hmm. to be true to what Absolutely. God put in me Absolutely. and who I am and how he created me. And it wasn't going to be for everybody. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. It's okay if you're not everybody's cup of tea. Yes. You don't have to be. Yes. You just have to be true to who it is that God called you to be. And that's where the longevity comes. When people go, well, I want to stay the course. Yes. Stay the course by staying true, not just to you, yes. but staying true to who he has created you to be. Yeah. And Natalie, I think when, when we both came out, I'm a lot older than you. I'll just no, say that. Yeah, I'm gonna put that out there. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna say that. No, no. I'm, but I'm gonna say because I was about, I was 33 when the Redeemer album yes. came out. You know what I'm saying? So by then, I had already had a chance with my trial and error of this is who I am, this is who I'm not. Yes. So at that point, I was able to say, you know, wh what you hear is who I am. And at least if you don't like me, you know who you don't like. So I was committed to, I'm not gonna sing what's not me. Yes. Because I was 33, I was a little yes. older. You know what I'm saying? When you're younger, a lot of hands are on you trying yes. to mold you into who they want you to be. Yes. But I was a little on, more on the stubborn side of like, no. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So who I am, if you go back 20 years and listen, totally. it's like still who I am, Funkabilly. I'm gonna do something yeah. crazy, yeah. something yeah. funky, something yeah. out of the, because that's, yes. who, that's who I am, you know? Yes. And so I, I think the more we are able to embrace our uniquenesses, yes. the freer we are to just be who God has called us to be. You know, a lot of people are extremely talented. I mean, they can do, they can paint, they can this, they can sing, they can, you know, cook, they can all kinds of stuff. And when I say this, I don't say it in a self-deprecating way, but I don't have many talents. My main thing is I'm a good communicator. I'm a good writer and a good speaker. And I can get my point across. And I always say you may not like what I said, but when you leave, you won't be confused. Right. Yeah. You'll, you'll know you'll, what I said. Yeah. You'll know what I said. Mm -hmm. And I just think that there's people watching today and you don't feel like you're very talented. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You have something. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Yes. That's right. And even if you only have one thing, so yeah. like I can write and I can preach. Mm -hmm. And I've written 150 books yeah. and yes. working on two more right now. And I preach and preach and preach and preach and preach. And if that's all I ever do, 
that's fine. I don't have to grow tomatoes. <laughs> I, don't have to, li- I don't have to like to counsel yep. people. Yep. You know, I don't have to be what somebody else is. And so just take, take what you have yeah. yes. and embrace it and do something with it and quit worrying about what you have not. That's right, that's right. So good. You counsel people every time you open your voice. So you are doing that to the world, you know? And and again, I say this every time, Joyce, every country we go into, there is at least one Christian voice, and it's hers. In in how many languages now, two? Our TV program is is in 104 languages. Yeah. I mean, and it's not like wow. little crawlies across no. the screen. No, we it's have not. Interpreters. It's interpreters. It's voices. And all those Incredible. Yeah. And Wait, the voice you, I hate it. And the voice yeah. you hate. Look at the Lord magnifying. Mm. Yeah. You know, and and I think you know whatever you went through and whatever you went through, I think a lot of people would never even notice that. No. But in our selves, we recognize every bad thing. God takes that and uses that. And I, think I think that's, that's often so the case. I think the very thing that we hate about ourselves, God, is always got a way to turn it around and make it good. And I, I just, I love the freeing part of when you realise this is who God made me. I think it goes back to what you said, Joyce, about it's an insult to God. Because my mum would say that about me every time I would curse my nose. And she'd, she'd say, God made that nose. Why do you, ha- you can't say you hate it. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't have a cute, you know, you have a ski jump nose. It's so cute. It's like a, mine's a big Roman nose, you know, like bang. And I, I could say, because like to put glasses on, it, it's weird and all the things. And I always just used to, it wasn't feminine for me. That's the way I interpret it. But, but now I'm like, I don't care. What's a nose? But even that, I think, you know, I, I, we were talking about this, about us being friends, about how when you've learned to just love yourself and love your lane yes. and you're, you're not comparing yes. and you're not jealous, yes. the friendship that you have with yes. people is such a freeing yes. space because that's why I think I said to her one day, I said, we're like Oprah and Gail, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oprah and Gail, they don't, they're not vying for each other's lives. And I think sometimes there hits a crossroad when you're not freeing yourself. You get jealous of your friend because they're free and living in their lane. You're not, and sometimes you have to leave those friendships behind because they can really hold you back. But I've just learned to love my life, my lane, and celebrate all of you beautiful ladies that are sitting here, what unique gifts each and every one have. I'm like, go for it, yes. celebrate it, you know, admire it, learn from it, rather than be jealous of it. And so it's freeing. It's so freeing, it's freeing. to actually be able to celebrate yeah. others. Yeah. There's a real freedom in that. I told you I was trying to be like my pastor's wife. And her and I just, we didn't seem to get along very well. And uh, <laughs> you trying to be come her? to find out she was trying to be like me. <laughs> She thought she, usually how it works, she was right? trying to be tougher and more aggressive and I was trying to lower my voice and be sweet. <laughs> and it's like, I think everybody does it. You know, we, we yeah, find somebody yeah. else that totally. we think yeah. we should be like. And it's so wonderful to get to the point where you don't, I don't need to be like anybody yeah, else. Right, yeah. Don't want to be like anybody else. Been there, done that, I'm me. Yeah. Yes. You know? And then you're free to maximize you. Right. You know, and then therefore you have books and, you know, speeches everywhere, you know. Well, why don't you pray for us? Okay. (laughs) Father, we thank you for all the people that are watching today that are being set free to be who they are and to embrace their own uniqueness. And they're beautiful. They're created in God's image and you have something special for them and something you want them to do. I pray that they will no longer look at other people and think, I wish I looked like you. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. I pray that people will respect you enough to embrace who you made them to be. In Jesus' name, amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.